In this video, I want to present my experiment into finding the ultimate free riding, wave riding, wing foil board. Obviously, I haven't found it yet, but I've made a lot of progress towards it, and I want to show you my journey as well as where I'm right now. So before looking into the detail of that new board I had built uh, with my design, I want to show you how, what are the specifications I was looking to and how I arrived to this design. So first, in terms of objective, what I'm trying to achieve with this is to have a board that's going to maximize the maneuverability for free riding and wave riding. And I want, as a hard criteria, to be able to take off in 15 knots. So to be able to really take off in marginal condition. So what was I motivated by? I was motivated by my background in kite surfing. So I, I add taste to the feeling and uh, the fun and the joy of riding pocket boards such as this one. So I wanted to retrieve this while wing foiling. So I realized that I could do it. I could take off with a wing with a small 12 liter pocket board. The problem is that I couldn't take off in marginal condition. I was needing way too much wind to be able to take off in those conditions. So after this first experiment to find what was the lowest I could ride it with, I decided, okay, I need to build a new board. This one was 20 liters. It's simply a scaled up version of my 12 liter board, but now with 20 uh, liters, the mast is centered roughly the same position with respect to the mast. I simply increase the length in the tail here. Unfortunately, that experiment was really bad. Okay, although I could ride it, the performance of the board was really poor. One, due to the flat bottom. So the flat bottom uh, really always stuck to the water whenever I was touching down or trying to pump. And while trying to pump, the fact that I have a large flat tail in the back was really scorching to the water was I was trying to pump to get onto speed on the foil. Also, I realized that 20 liters is not enough to get going reliably, okay? So I like to think in terms of volume to weight of the rider ratio, my 12 liter board you can see here, this is about an 18% volume in liters to weight in kilogram for the rider. This one 20 liters is about a 30% volume to weight ratio. Again, this is not enough. I'm sitting too low in the water in order for me to gain enough wind speed to get going, okay? So that was too hard to start. So I had to, to, to come up with, again, something new. So I knew from my kind of go-to board was that KT Drifter S 33 liters that I could ride it. it. It was going well, but I also felt that I was not taking off all the potential out of the riding, okay? So from these experiments, I build my new prototype. So before looking in the detail of that board, I want to look at the five uh, riding phases that we need to look into in order to design the specification of such a board. So the first phase of riding is just static lift. So you're not moving a lot yet. You're like kneeling on the board, zero speed, and you're just trying to get going with the wind. Okay, so this is the first phase. So there's some specification for this one. The second one is going to be the displacement planning. So you get going, you start, you're still kneeling, but you start to get going and have some speed and you're going to eventually transition to being standing up. This is the second speed. There are also some spec for that second phase. Third phase is going to be taking off pumping. Okay, so now you move and you're trying to actively pump the wing and pump the board with your feet. Again, there's some spec for that third phase. For fourth one is easy, the fun one is foiling, okay? This is where we want to maximize the maneuverability. And finally, the fifth one is whenever you mess up and you touch down on the water. You want a board that's gonna be forgiving and it's gonna allow you to transit without losing too much speed. So if we look at the first phase for the static lift, so this is where the volumes matter, because when you go look at the static speed, you want enough volume in your board to allow you to float, to get some clean air out of the surface of the water, because typically there's a, a highly nonlinear gradient of the wind speed with respect to your height above the water. 
In this case, this is why I have 33 liters and I have a relatively, it doesn't look like it, but a relatively thick board. It's about eight centimeter thick. So in this case, that represents that 33 liters, a 50% volume to weight of the rider ratio. And I think this is around the sweet spot to be able to take off in marginal condition, something around 15 knots. So then the second phase is that displacement planning. Okay, so now you got enough force in your wind wing in order to start gaining some forward momentum. So now you don't only rely on the volume of your board to get going, you're gonna also rely on the surface area of your board. So while relying on the surface area, the amount of area you have there will matter. If you have a really chubby board that is short and that is wide and that is thick, then you're not gonna take full advantage of the surface in order to get going and gain speed. Because as soon as you gain speed, the board gets out of the water. So having that volume out of the water won't help you to get faster going. So that's why here with this second phase, uh, I decided to build that prototype with a width of 47 centimeters by 140 centimeters. So that gave me, we discussed earlier about the ratio for the volume of the board to the weight of the rider. I thought, I said the sweet spot was around 50%. I think there's also a ratio of surface to weight of the rider. And I find that this sweet spot should be around 100 square centimeters per kilogram of the rider. And this is what I have here with this board. So with a width of 47 centimeters for a length of around uh, 140 centimeters. And here you see the outline is fairly square because I was trying to pack as much surface area I could in the smallest or the narrowest width and the shortest span I could. So, uh, and in that second phase of, uh, um, of displacement planning, I didn't pay attention too much on the shape of the hole. Okay, that's gonna come more in for phase uh, five where it is for touchdown. Okay, I just here focused on the surface area. So now for the uh, phase three, which is the takeoff pumping. So when you get going with the wing and with the jumping uh, uh, on the board, what you want or what you don't want is to have here volume in the back. In my case, the foil connect right here and you don't want to have volume in the back there because if you have volume there, whenever you're gonna be pumping, this part here is gonna scorch through the water while you move forward. So this, I realized with my previous prototype, this is highly inefficient for taking off while pumping or while touching down. So this is why I remove here all the back part. And this is with an angle of about eight degrees for the part that is right behind my foil track. So another thing that is important is to try to have the center of gravity of the board. This is about here that is gonna be roughly where you're gonna be standing so that whenever you're gonna start riding, you're gonna be right away in the good position. You won't have to reposition yourself after for riding. Now let's move to the fourth phase. We're, we're out in the air, we're riding. So while we want to ride, the design parameters there are the trade-off between the width of the board and the length, okay? Because you wanna maintain that surface area of roughly 100 square centimeters per kilogram of the rider. And in that case, what I decided to go to is to board that is fairly narrow. So in this case, 47 centimeters, and I shaped it as a V bottom, okay? And the width of the V bottom is really just the width of the foil tracks, okay? It's the minimal width that I need to put my uh, standard US track. And you see that the, the uh, uh, bottom is shaped like a V to allow me to lean as much as possible while carving, okay, from one size to the other. So this is my, uh, my criteria. And also, um, 
given that I chose a width of 47 centimeters, that would uh, dictate the length of 140 centimeters to, to again maintain that ratio of 100 square centimeters per kilogram of rider of the weight. Uh, and if we look at the surface area, if we compare this to my uh, actual board. So if you look here, I can compare in the, the, sh the transparent one is a KT Drifter 33 liters with the outline of my current board. So what you can see is that in my previous board, both here were positioned in order to present, uh, in order to have the foil exactly at the same place. So when I was foiling with my KT board, I was really all the way positioned to the back here. Whereas now with my new board, I'm more centered in terms of position. And if we look at the outline on the bottom here, we can see that for a same volume of board, now I have more surface area because I've packed everything into a more rectangular shape. And also, if you can look here in the distribution of the volume, before the nose contained a lot of volume, now the nose is really thin, and the back contains a lot of volume because this is going to, was going to be underwater when I'm going to take off. And uh, now I'm going to have a centered position around the board rather than riding all the way to the back of it. So this is for the design parameter. And now for the main part, how do we handle with maneuverability? So maneuverability with foiling is going to be, con is going to be governed by our capacity to turn the, the board around the mast. So if I want to carve left with the foil, what I need to do is I need to counter steer, like with a motorbike or a bicycle. So if I, if I want to lean left, I'm not going to actually transfer my weight to the left. What I'm going to do then, I'm going to point my board to the right and automatically that's going to shift my feet to the right and I'm going to start and carve the board. And same thing, I want to carve to the right, I'm going to point the board left and that's going to initiate the leaning and the board is going to start carving. But in order to be able to do so, to turn the board around the vertical axis, you want to minimize the rotational inertia of your board around that vertical axis. Okay, and that inertia grows with the square of the distance of a mass with respect to the center of rotation. So what does it mean? So the longer and the wider is your board, the harder is gonna to be to turn around. And in practice, this board turns around the mast. Okay, so the farther back you're gonna put your mast, the more swing harm you're gonna to have to turn your board, the harder is gonna, is gonna be to turn. And if you want to do the exercise, take a broomstick. If you take the broomstick by one end and you try to initiate a rotation, you're gonna see that it takes a lot more force than if you take that broomstick in the middle of the stick. It's gonna be much easier to turn. Why? Because you don't have that very lo long part that stick out, okay? You reduce by half the top and the bottom half. That makes it easier to maneuver. This is gonna be the same thing with the foil board. So you want to have the center of gravity of the board, that we can see here, that's gonna be as close as possible to the foil mass. And you can see here where I position it, it's very close. I'm gonna put in this, in this case, my uh, foil uh, all the way back to the track so that the front of the mass is gonna be roughly corresponding to the center of gravity of my board. And that's going to give it the most maneuverability while riding. So um, then, uh, uh, and keep in mind also that in this case, my board is a little bit special because I use this foil where the mast bowl directly into the, uh, the mast bowl directly into the front wing. Okay, so that can allow me to move that mast all the way forward. So you can see my previous video where I present how I made these changes to be able to ride with uh, such, such a foil. But what you can see in terms of result is that now my own center of gravity is gonna always be aligned with the center of lift of my front wing. But now to maximize my maneuverability, I've also aligned the center of gravity of the board 
with that axis. So that now I have the most compact shape possible that also have the minimal rotational inertia to really get the most maneuverability. If we compare it to what I had before, so with my KT board, so you see I still have the center of gravity, the center of lift of my wing, but now the center of gravity of the board, you see how offset I am. This is in big part because the previous tracks were really far back that forced me to really ride on the back of the board, which I don't need to do with the new design. So this design uh, is uh, fairly uh, complete. If we look here in terms of the additional perks, you can see here that I already included a kicktail that is built in the board. So the angle of the kicktail is eight degrees. It follows that cutout I have here. So I can feel directly just with my feet if it is correctly positioned on the board. Same thing with the rails here. You can see that I've added bevels on the rails so that I can really feel, depending with my heels and toe, where my feet are on the board. So I, I tried it, it works really well. It gives you an intuitive feel about what is your feet position at and all time. Now, if we look at how does it ride, so you can see here the example of takeoff that was in about uh, 25 knots. So it was blowing, but not crazy. I'm here with a 2.5 meter wing. So it's a fairly small wing, but you see the guy there as a nine meter kite. So it was not blowing like crazy. I tried it also in much lower wind. I tried it uh, in the previous week in also 15 knots. I could easily take off with a five meter wing in 15 knots. I could, if I struggle, take it off with a four meter wing as well. So now that you can see me riding, see how the board looks super thin, okay? It's not a, a cheat, it's really because of that V bottom, that the only part that is exposed to the water is gonna be that thin edge, which will allow, whenever I touch the water, to recover it really promptly. Also, the bottom of the board, I forgot to talk about it, it's really concave, it's rounded, so that I, whenever I touch the water, it's gonna be a small patch that's gonna to touch it. It's gonna bounce right off and the board is super, super forgiving. Also, by chopping the front of the nose, I'm able to reduce the weight, reduce the rotational inertia, and being able to, uh, to have something that is forgiving. So here you can see a little jump. This board uh, goes really well because it's super light. It's Robert from, um, from uh, I forgot the name. It's Robert from uh, Kawa Boards that built it. And I was really a pain. He built it custom for me and I had tons of requirement. I was always asking him to cut on the way, to remove some reinforcement, to also experiment on the construction to make it as light as possible. So that board is really minimalistic. It's only 2.5 kilograms. So uh, it's, if we look at the building, it was CNC cut by Robert uh, with my designs. So you can see an example, an outline of how the blank looks like. It's an EPS blank. Um, that has been then uh, laminated with carbon. So it's really minimalistic. And thanks to Robert, it really listened to me at all the steps. And I could really try to get the board that is the lightest possible. We still have to see what is gonna be the durability, but in terms of weight and in terms of rideability, this is exceptional. And how does this board ride? You can see it, a bit of it. This is like nothing before. It's really noticeable that it's more maneuverable than my KT Drifter because it's so light and I don't have much swing weight. That board react to any input forces. So this board really wants to turn, but at the same time, it's forgiving. And it also takes off in uh, marginal conditions, so 15 knots. So really this is a big improvement towards the previous board I have. And I see that changing the shape and moving the weight distribution around has a massive uh, importance on the, uh, the riding. And it, it really provides only advantages 
and no disadvantages compared to the more traditional boards you're gonna find out there that you can buy in your local shop. So to conclude, uh, this board is really different from what exists out there compared to the other boards. So it's fairly different and it's really in the optic of trying to push the limit of what exists and what can be done, how can we reach the best board possible to ride rave to free ride. And I hope that that's going to also inspire and help the community to get there, get your hands uh, on some drawing boards or some uh, shaping tools and build your own stuff and come with your own idea. And I hope that I'm going to be able to borrow some of these ideas to come up with even better designs in the future.